welcome to this uh, lecture number 10 so we are continuing with the the previous uh, lecture so wherein we uh, went for the we derived an expression for the two dimensional general flow general ground water flow equation for an isotropic aquifer so which is of the form uh, d square h by dx square plus d square h by dy square is equal to s by t into dh by dt where uh, here h represents the head x and y represents the flow directions s is the storativity t is the transmissivity and uh, since it is an isotropic aquifer, aquifer the transmissivity in both the directions t x and t y are same equal to t and this d h represents the uh, rate of change of uh, head with time the partial derivative of the rate of change of head with time. Suppose it is a three dimensional flow and the flow uh, in the aquifer is isotropic. So, in this case there will be uh, the third term also okay, and uh, so therefore, this uh, for uh, an isotropic aquifer the general 3D ground water flow equation will be d square h by d x square plus d square h by d y square plus d square h by d z square is equal to s by t into d h by d t. So, this is the expression and obviously, in this case the left hand side is denoted by del square h. So, which is the uh, the combined notation for these uh, three second order partial derivative terms in uh, with respect to each of the directions. And uh, so, this is when the flow is unsteady flow. So, this is uh, of the form this is known as the diffusion equation and uh, when the flow is steady then this d h by d t will become 0. So, that the right hand side will be 0 and then this equation uh, attains the form of uh, the Laplace equation. Okay, so, when the flow the ground water flow is steady in that case this d h by d t is equal to 0. So, therefore, d square h by d x square plus d square h by d y square plus d square z by I am sorry d square h by d z square is equal to 0 and obviously, so this is a del square of h. So, del square h which is equal to d square h by d x square plus d square h by d y square plus d square h by d z square which is equal to 0. So, this is the, the famous uh, Laplace equation and so this is the, the general ground water flow equation general 3 d three dimensional ground water flow equation uh, 
here we can add one more this one 3 d ground water steady flow equation for uh, an isotropic aquifer. So, so initially when the aquifer was anisotropic in that case it will be different okay this uh, the terms will be different so for uh, anisotropic aquifer the 3d groundwater steady flow equation will be k x into d square h by d x square plus k y into d square h by d y square plus k z into d square h by d z square this is equal to 0. So, this is when the, the flow is steady and the aquifer is anisotropic and the flow is steady and three dimensional and uh, so uh, when the flow is uh, anisotropic three dimensional through an anisotropic aquifer and the flow is unsteady in that case the there will be the right hand term the right hand side will not be 0. So, here we can write down say for unsteady flow the 3 d general ground water flow equation through an anisotropic aquifer will be this uh, k x into b into d square h by d x square plus k y into b into d square h by d y square plus k z into b d square h by d z square. So, this is equal to s into d h by d t. So, this is the expression here the flow is unsteady and three dimensional and the aquifer is anisotropic. So, in that case this is the general form and when the flow becomes steady the right hand side terms term becomes 0 and the uh, aquifer is isotropic in that case k x is equal to k y is equal to k z in that case it will be the Laplace equation. So, therefore, uh, so this is how the general ground water flow equation it varies. Now, the same expression the for uh, say in radial coordinates that is 
axis symmetric ground water flow so the axisymmetric ground water flow through an isotropic aquifer the equation will be the the ground water flow equation will be d square h by d r square plus 1 by r d h by d r this is equal to s by t into d h by d t. So, this is the in the uh, cylindrical coordinate uh, this one of the radial coordinates where r is the radial distance and h is the head and uh, the radial coordinate and obviously this s is the same uh, storativity or uh, storage coefficient t is the transmissivity so and the flow is unsteady so here uh, uh, ground water unsteady flow so and uh, the axisymmetric ground water steady flow and the equation for axisymmetric ground water steady flow through an isotropic aquifer is d square h by d r square plus 1 by r d h by d r this is equal to 0. In this case the flow is steady. So, therefore, this d h by d t this term becomes 0. So, the right hand side becomes 0. So, this is the so this is the obviously the uh, the Laplace equation it is uh, equivalent in the cylindrical uh, coordinate system or the radial coordinate system. So, now let us uh, consider Say this is the confined ground water flow between two water bodies. So, here let us say this is the the upstream water body so let this be x and uh, this is x is equal to 0 and here we have the so this is the water level at the upstream water body where the head is h 0 and of course, uh, here we have the the top and bottom confining layers that is the impervious layers of this confined aquifer having a thickness b and uh, 
so here this is the the downstream water body where the the head is h1 so this is the so here this is the upstream water body so this is the downstream water body and the flow is taking place between uh, so on and here let us say so this is the general uh, the the ground between these two so on and uh, obviously so this is how the ground water flow takes place and uh, so this is uh, the the hydraulic grade line and uh, so this is the downstream water body this is the upstream water body and so in this case obviously uh, consider steady flow through an isotropic aquifer and in this case this is the flow is one dimensional okay so therefore the governing equation will be d square h by dx square is equal to 0 because the flow is only in the x direction so therefore the uh, this d square h by dy square as well as d square h by dz square so they will be 0 so only we get uh, this is d square h by dx square is equal to 0 so this is the governing equation so on integration we get so this is h which is equal to say c1 x plus c2 okay and uh, now we need to substitute the boundary conditions uh, to evaluate this uh, C1, the constants of integration C1 and C2. So, the boundary conditions are at x is equal to 0. H is equal to H zero. So therefore, H zero is equal to C two. And the second boundary condition is at x is equal to L, I am sorry here I just uh, forgot to show this as uh, one. So, this is uh, x is equal to L. So, this is the, the distance between the upstream water body and the downstream water body. So, here at x is equal to L, then h is equal to h 1. So, this uh, when C 2 is equal to H 0, so therefore, we get the expression that is X is equal to, I am sorry, this uh, H is equal to C 1 X plus H uh, 0. Now, let us substitute the second boundary condition. So, this uh, Therefore, H one will be equal to C one into L plus H zero. Therefore, C one is equal to H one minus H zero divided by L. 
which we can also write this as minus of h 0 minus h 1 divided by L. Since h 0 is bigger the head in the, the piezometric surface in the upstream motor body. So, it is uh, having this one. So, we can write that if we write that first. So, therefore, we get the expression after evaluating both the constants we get this h is equal to h 0 minus h 0 minus h 1 by L into x. So, this is the expression for uh, head at any general section uh, which is uh, at a distance of x from the upstream water body. And uh, so, so this is the here you can say this is the equation for, so this is the equation for the hydraulic grade line H G L. which is assumed to be linear. Okay. And uh, let us also write down an expression for the, the discharge per unit width of the through the confined aquifer between two water bodies. So, the by Darcy's law, discharge per unit width for ground water flow between for uh, here you can say the confined ground water flow between two water bodies is given by this q is equal to minus the hydraulic uh, conductivity k into d h by d x k into minus d h by d x where this minus d h by d x is the, the hydraulic gradient into the area since this is unit width. So, this will be 1 into b or simply b. Okay. So, in this case, so this is uh, minus k into b into the hydraulic gradient is a minus of h 0 minus h 1 divided by L. That is q is equal to k into b into h 0 minus h 1 divided by L. So, this is the expression for uh, discharge per unit width for uh, confined ground water flow between two water bodies. So, the discharge per unit width for uh, confined ground water flow between two water bodies and obviously, so here uh, and this we all start with this steady flow, confined ground water steady flow between two water bodies. So, in this case the discharge per unit width is given by this k into b, which we can also replace this by transmissivity T, the transmissivity or transmissibility and uh, H 0 and H 1 are the heads 
in the upstream and downstream water body and L is the distance uh, along the flow direction between the two water bodies. So, if you know uh, the, the, the transmissivity or uh, the hydraulic conductivity and the, the thickness of the, uh, the confined aquifer through which the flow takes place between the two water bodies, the upstream water body having a head of H0 and the downstream water body having a head of H1 and with the distance of L separating them. So, then this uh, Q is given by K into B into H0 minus uh, H1 divided by L. Okay. So, now let us come to the unconfined flow, that means flow through an unconfined aquifer, wherein the the Dupit's assumptions Dupit's assumptions for uh, unconfined groundwater flow. So, in uh, 1863, so, these Dupit's assumptions, Dupit is an hydraulic engineer and in the year 1863, he proposed uh, two assumptions for the unconfined groundwater flow. The first assumption is the curvature of the free surface is very small so that the streamlines are assumed to be horizontal at all sections, at all sections. So, this is the first assumption and uh, and as per this assumption, even though there is slight uh, uh, inclination for the streamlines, so that inclination is neglected and the streamlines are assumed to be horizontal at all sections. And the second assumption is the slope of the hydraulic grade line that is H E L is equal to the free surface slope and it does not vary with the depth. So, this is a second Dupit's assumption. The first assumption in which the streamlines are assumed to be horizontal in all directions. So, that whatever little inclination in the streamlines is there that is neglected and the second assumption is the slope of the hydraulic grade line is equal to the free surface slope and it does not vary with the depth. So, these are the two Dupit's assumptions and which are uh, applicable for uh, ground water flow through unconfined aquifers. And now, using these uh, uh, Dupit's assumptions, let us uh, determine 
the the ground water flow through unconfined aquifer. So, here uh, let us consider the ground water flow through unconfined aquifer. So, let us consider let us consider this as the z direction, this is the x direction and uh, this is the y direction and uh, here let us consider So, this is the water table and uh, so the this dimension along the y direction So, this is delta y and this is the origin and this dimension. So, this is delta x and uh, this head is h and uh, here let us uh, consider the the ground water inflow let us consider the flow to be in the positive direction of x and y so let this be mx1 and the ground water outflow the mass outflow let us take this to be m x 2 in the x and y direction. Similarly, the, the ground water inflow in the y direction let us take this to be m y 1 and the ground water outflow through the other phase in the y direction let us take this to be m y 2 and this is the water table. So, now let us write down the expressions for the mass flux entering the element so this is given by m x 1 so, this is rho into say V x which is the velocity ground water flow velocity in the x direction into h into delta y, h into delta y is the cross sectional area. So, this V x into the cross sectional area of flow that will be discharge, discharge into rho that will be the mass flux or the mass rate of flow, mass rate of inflow. Similarly, mass flux leaving the, the element, so this is m x 2, so this is given by rho v x h delta y plus let us uh, add the mass rate of change term in the x direction that is d by d x of rho v x h delta y 
into this delta x. Okay. So, therefore, now let us write down this is the net mass f flux in x direction so this is mx1 minus mx2 so this will be given by minus d by dx of rho vx h delta y into delta x Similarly, net mass efflux in y direction. So, this is given by m y 1 minus m y 2. So, this will be given by minus d by d y of rho v y. into h d x h I am sorry h uh, delta x into delta y. So, therefore, since there is a neither inflow nor outflow in the z direction. So, the continuity equation gives obviously, so here this m x 1 minus m x 2 is denoted by this is the delta m x. Similarly, m y 1 minus m y 2 is denoted by delta m y. So, therefore, this uh, delta m x plus delta m y plus delta m y is equal to 0. Therefore, we get, so after simplification, we get d by d x of uh, v x into h plus d by d y of v y into h is equal to 0. And obviously, so here this delta x delta y as well as rho, okay, so that can be cancelled. Okay, so, this is the expression we get. And uh, we know that say by Darcy's law, we get this uh, V x is equal to minus k into d h by d x and this V y is equal to minus k into d h by d y. Therefore, if we call this equation 1, so this equation 1 becomes d by d x of minus k d h by d x into h plus d by d y of minus k into d h by d y into h 
this is equal to 0. And again here you can take out this k outside the one, you can cancel out. So, therefore, we are left with this is uh, d square by d x square of h square plus d square by d y square of uh, h square is equal to 0. And uh, this you can denote this as del square of h square. So, this is the governing equation for uh, steady ground water flow through unconfined aquifer. unconfined aquifer. So, this uh, unconfined aquifer for the steady flow, this uh, it satisfies Laplace equation in h square, whereas the confined uh, aquifer will uh, satisfy the Laplace equation in h, while well, in case of unconfined aquifer it satisfies the Laplace equation in h square. So, now let us consider the unconfined aquifer that is the unconfined ground water steady flow with recharge. Suppose there is uh, some recharge in the z direction, say when there is a uh, due to pre rainfall or precipitation. So, this uh, the ground water is getting recharged. So, in that case, what will be the expression? Let us say. And uh, so, here let us uh, draw the, the basic uh, figure with uh, x, y and z directions and uh, So, this is the, the water table and it is getting a recharge at the rate of r and uh, here. So, this is the origin and uh, this is the dimension in the x direction and uh, this is the dimension in the of this element in the y direction that is delta y and uh, the variable head h and in this case So, let this uh, the mass inflow through x direction let it be m x 1, the mass inflow let this be m x 2 and similarly, the mass inflow in the y direction let it be m y 1 and the mass inflow in the y direction mass outflow uh, along the y direction be m y 2 and uh, obviously, so this is the water table, 
water table and uh, this r is the the recharge in the z direction so now in this case it is all similar to the the previous case except that in this case so there will be an additional term that is uh, mass efflux in the z direction that is the net mass efflux in z direction that is delta m z is given by rho into r which is the rate of recharge into the area of uh, flow uh, perpendicular to the z direction that will be delta x into delta y. Okay. So, therefore, for steady incompressible flow the continuity equation becomes delta m x plus delta m y plus delta m z is equal to 0. So, that is we get minus d by d x of uh, rho v x h delta x delta y minus d by d y of uh, rho v y h delta x delta y and the this uh, recharge that is the net efflux in the z direction that is given by rho r delta x delta y this becomes 0. So, again let us substituting uh, substitute v x is equal to minus k into d h by d x and uh, v y is equal to minus k into d h by d y and simplify. So, here we get this is a uh, of course, here this is a uh, rho delta x delta y that can be taken out and uh, in this case we are left with that is uh, d square by d x square of h square plus d square by d y square of h square this is equal to minus 2 r by k. So, here uh, this term r is there. So, therefore, uh, it will be h square by 2 and then so it will be minus 2 r by k. So, this is the general ground water steady flow equation through unconfined aquifer with recharge. Okay. So, the general ground water so 
answer here this is the governing equation. So, in case of steady flow through an unconfined aquifer the it satisfies Laplace equation in uh, H square whereas, when there is a recharge through the uh, this one the unconfined aquifer at the rate of r uh, along the z direction the the general governing equation for uh, steady flow through unconfined aquifer will be given by this is uh, d square by dx square of h square plus d square by dy square of h square so this is equal to minus 2r by k okay so this is how the the groundwater governing flow equation it changes its uh, form in case of an unconfined uh, aquifer when there is uh, no recharge as well as when there is recharge so now let us consider the the one dimensional dew pits flow with recharge between say two water bodies so let us say this is a 1d ground water flow between two water bodies one day ground water unconfined flow with recharge. So, let us uh, consider unconfined ground water flow and uh, let this be the upstream water body. and let this be the, the ground surface and let this be. So, this is the upstream water body where the head is H 0 and the downstream water body where the head is h 1 and there is a the constant recharge and uh, here this is the constant recharge of rate r and uh, in this case the water table will assume a shape like this there will be a peak somewhere in between and uh, wherein the h is h m or the h max and this is the water table and uh, so the aquifer permeability is uh, hydraulic conductivity as k and in this case there is a obviously flow into the upstream water body as well as flow into the downstream water body this is q 0 this is q 1 okay and in the next lecture 
and obviously at this, uh, so at any general section H, say here the, this is the general section H, so this is uh, x is equal to 0, x is equal to L and uh, so obviously this is uh, this is L and uh, at general section H. So, in this case this is Q x. So, in the next lecture we will uh, discuss this one. Thank you.